See, when you're old, you know never to sit under overhead lights. The lighting is terrible. I'm going to talk. Can I move the seat a little bit? Oh, no, you don't need to. Well, we're going to talk to your producers for next year. All right, thank you. I feel like I should be Dolly Parton or something. Um, it's, it's so, so exciting, exciting to be sitting here. Close. <laughs> is it a blonde hair? Is it? You're, so You're so beautiful, beautiful and, and I'm, I'm so, so glad, glad you wore blue. blue. So, so we're, we're not all the same. So I can read. <laughs> you, you want the glow? You want, want the glow? Yes, 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 our time here is. You want to look on my eyes. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm, oh, I'm kidding. I don't want to say it. All right. I'm sorry. No, no. No, this is great. There's a lot of people here. 6,000. No, nope. and they're all on one 6, level. And, and all 6,000 people, <laughs> <laughs> I think all 6,000 of them share the feeling that I have, which is, I cannot believe I'm sitting here today with Lily Tomlin, Tomlin and Jake Marta. <laughs> you two have always embodied the theme that this year's conference is, stand up, lift up. And you've been doing it since early in your careers. And, and that is where we should start, start because, okay. as the and theme song, song, as you were introduced, suggests, we, we all have such a deep connection, connection to 9 to 5, five. so, so I'm going to get the most, most hard-hitting question, question out of the way, way first. Okay. Is, is there, there going to be a sequel? Who wants to see a sequel? Who wants to see a 9 to 5 sequel? We're working on it. Oh. Yes. How working on it? How far along are you? Well, you're on board, right? There are two writers. We're all on board, including Dolly. And there are two writers who are working on it um, at Fox, where it originally was. And we don't know if Fox is going to become Disney or Comcast or what, but you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, yeah. You know, but the office as a workplace is very different today than it used to be. So it's going to be, it's going to be interesting to show the changes. I wish I, I could, could say, say we accomplished, accomplished more. I was going to say, you know, you know over 30 years, years ago, it was, it was a hit, a hit when everybody felt, felt it was so relatable to see three women working, working so hard, hard in the office, office grinding away, away, really carrying the bulk of the burden, burden but then but getting, getting none of the recognition, of recognition, especially you, Lily, in, in your role, <laughs> right? right? Uh, on today. Yeah, yeah. the male boss who's chauvinistic that you eventually managed to tie up, took all the credit. And I was going to say, like, that was happening back then. And, and today, today, I recognize I should have been promoted. I had a, that pencil behind my ear. <laughs> yeah, you were the smart one. The pencil gave it away. Um, no, but how much do you think things have changed since those days when we all sort of laughed about it, but also there was a little bit of crying along with the laughing because you knew that was, to some extent, reality in so many offices. Well, one, well, one big thing, thing that the m movie did, did was it, it, uh, it, it created, created a union, union the uh, part of SEIU, Public Employees Service Union, and, um, uh, District 9 to 5. And, and it also, uh, office, office workers, workers didn't have to explain, explain anymore, anymore what the problems were. were. The, the, the film made everybody <laughs> see what the problems <laughs> were and then, you know, try to set out to do something about it. Flex time became a little more popular. You know, yeah, on-the-job on the child, child care, care became a little, a little more, more prevalent, but, but e pay wage is, you know, yeah, still unequal, and, and sexual harassment, of course, is still... How many, how many, how many women, women in this room have experienced sexual, sexual harassment, harassment of some, some sort? Raise your hands. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, thank I you, think thank you. to be exempt. <laughs> okay. You <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie Jack Spear asked, asked me to ask you. I wasn't hands. really harassed, but I have great empathy with the ones who did, so I identify deeply in my heart with being harassed. <laughs> Her heart is so big. She, she, she empathizes with... I, I kill, in the first scene of the first episode of Grace and Frankie, I killed a fly because we were at a dinner table and she was very upset. And that's a true story. That's, That's Lily. Lily. She's, She's upset, upset if you kill a fly. Oh, well, my God. Is that why you were crying backstage? There was a fly, right? I think there was a fly. It was just a, just a little creature present on the planet. Didn't have that many days to live on the planet anyway. No advocates. 
No, no and, that's, that's right. right. No, no, you know, you know Howard Stern, Stern said, said to Jane, Jane on his show that, that when, when she, she was, was so active, active in the anti-war movement in the 70s, he's, he, he teared, he cried. He, he said, I, I, I knew that you cared about me. And she didn't know him, but she, but she, and he felt that deeply by her behavior that she felt for him and wanted to help him, save him from having to go to Vietnam. So you're saying that because there's nobody that the fly can feel. You were saying the fly did not have any advocates. Okay. We didn't know that it was going to take this turn. <laughs> Because, because um, you, mentioned you mentioned advocates, advocates which I think is, is very important, important especially, especially for, for women, women, both in the workplace and their personal lives. Um, um, let's, let's start, start with being in the office. office. When, you when you were filming, filming this movie, movie that, that became so groundbreaking, groundbreaking how, how did you, you both advocate for each other and for the other, other women on the set? set. And, and you, you know, know what, what did that help accomplish? I mean, I, mean, I, know, I know, Jane, Jane you brought, brought Lily into, into the movie, movie right? <laughs> I mean, you advocated at a time when women didn't really necessarily have that editorial clout. Well, well yeah, yeah I, I, I started producing my own movies in the 70s. It was that, that or leave the business. business. And, and, and 9 to 5 started, started off as a kind of a serious movie. movie. But then, but then I, I went and saw Lily in her one-woman one show appearing nightly in, in, in Los, Los Angeles, Angeles. And, and I fell, fell in love with her, and, and I, I said, I'm not going to do a movie about, about secretaries unless Lily Tomlin's, Tomlin's in it. And then and driving home from the theater, the theater that, that night, true story, I turned the radio on and Dolly was singing, and I thought, oh, if she's in it too, people would really, really be interested in seeing that. I mean, what happens when you have breasts to hear? And two inch, inch long, long nails, nails, and you're sitting at the typewriter, you can't, you can't see. <laughs> <laughs> and she'd never made a movie, and so I knew that in order to get Lily and Dolly, that it had to be a real comedy, so we kind of changed everything because of her. So that was advocacy, I guess. And that's also how the friendship was born? Yeah, that's my, how my uncle Wallace, who was a pig farmer in Kentucky, he. Uh, he went, went to see, to see uh, 9 to 5 in, in, in Paducah, which is the only city within 50, 60 miles of where he lived. And my aunt Odie May, his older sister, said the next morning, she said, well, Wallace put on a suit and tie and drove all the way to Paducah last night to see 9 to 5. Hadn't seen a movie in 30 years. And he laughed so much, he's going back again next Saturday. Oh. Someone read that at Colin's funeral, Colin Higgins, who was the director. Well, I'm really, I'm really glad, glad there's going to be a sequel because Me Too has really brought to light that sexual harassment, all those issues you confronted back then, and they're still there, but there are women now speaking up. I mean, women who have the name and clout, and they're using it to bring about social change. You two are also at the forefront of that. Talk about how that feels to see kind of this wave now happening. Well, well, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's incredibly, incredibly um, stirring and firing and, 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 and wonderful. wonderful. As, As I, I said, said, I've, I've said, said this before, before. It, it, you know, it started, started with white, white famous women, women speaking, speaking up. up. And, maybe and maybe that's, that's how, how it had to start. start. I, mean, I mean, black, black women, women have been way, way, way ahead of us for a long time, not just Anita Hill, talking about sexual harassment. And they have not been believed, Anita Hill, for example. But now, you know, you know, it is, it is being paid, paid attention, attention to, to and, and the perpetrators, perpetrators are being, you know, you know called to task and, and, and are being toppled. toppled. And, and the Me Too, Me Too movement is the telling of the stories of the victims, but that's moved into Time's Up, where we're actually trying to make structural institutional changes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're meeting with janitors and farm workers and domestic workers and restaurant workers and so forth to see how we can have each other's backs and, and really make a, a, a systemic difference. Because there's still a lot of women out there who don't have that voice. So Time's Up has been... And are far more vulnerable. Yeah. Right. And I know you actually put your time and energy where your causes are. You actually were in a participating in a march recently for one fair wage, right, for the restaurant workers. Well, Lily comes from Michigan, so we went to Michigan where there's a ballot measure that we're hoping to get on the ballot, calling for one fair wage. For restaurant workers. For restaurant, tipped workers. Many of which are women, right? Most of which, like 80% of restaurant workers are women. And when you depend exclusively on tips, 
then, then you know, you're, you're, you have to put up with whatever the customer does to you. And, and you know, you know somewhat some restaurant, restaurant work, female, female restaurant, restaurant workers are suffering PTSD because of what's been, their, their breasts have been bitten, bitten their, their butts have been grabbed. grabbed. I mean, it's really, really bad. But the seven states where restaurant workers own minimum wage, the sexual harassment was cut in half. So this is a really important issue, and Lily and I went went there last fall and kind of rallied the troops, right? Yeah, it was great fun. We had, uh, it, was, it was exciting, actually, to be in, in the ground, uh, on the ground with the, the beginning of a new campaign. And, uh, and this, uh, uh, my people's, or uh, our, the people's Michigan. platform, yeah. We're building a, a, a parallel movement from the people that signed the ballot initiative. So that, so that even, even after the election, there'll be a We the People Michigan movement, and it can be a template for other states. See, that's what we have to do now. We have to be paying attention to what's going on on the ground, talking to people that may not agree with us, and opening our hearts so we don't otherize people, so that we have empathy for people no matter who they are, and that we rise together. You know, they, they say a rising tide lifts all boats, not if they're tied to the bottom because of racial and gender, racist and gender, um, M mores, mores, culture, culture and institutions. institutions. You know, those, those boats don't rise, so, so we, we white, white people have to be sure we cut those ropes, ropes so that all boats rise. But we can't do it unless we know the problem exists, and that's what's so important about me, too. <laughs> and time's up because people now are realizing how widespread it is. Now, I want to also talk about something, something that, that is very, very important, important to both of you in your lives which, which is, is friendship. friendship. The, way the way you do <laughs> support each other <laughs> and riff off each, each other, there's something, there's something special, special that, that I can see, see even backstage that gives you both strength. strength. And, and I want to ask you, you, how important is it for everyone, everyone here, here to build the kind of friendship that, that you have? have. And, and how can they do, do it? it? It seems so, so unique, unique what you have. have. How do we do it? How do we find our Jane or our Lily? Well, you know, it's, I mean, I was a fan of Jane's before she even knew me. And uh, in fact, I wore my, I, I wore the clute uh, hairdo for a couple of years. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I was just, and so then she came to see me at the Amundsen, as she said, and, oh, and I had written to her when she had FTA, and, for the, the Vietnam, Vietnam War, War I'd written her to, to take me with her, and, and uh, she, uh, I never heard from her. <laughs> so, so I've, I've, I've loved her from afar. Her. She was. <laughs> <laughs> She's a special, a special person. person. <laughs> I feel. I've 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 look at her there. Look, look at and that. Look at you. Yeah, yeah, I know, but you're, there too. you're, you're like, like holding, holding up a sign. <laughs> Tell you the fun that we have on the set of, of Grace and Frankie. We, it, it really is fun. And, um, okay, Grace and Frankie. I, I, back, backstage, she's just like she's calling, calling, calling. calling. She's just every minute she's on the airplane. She's. No, no, no. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's, she just that's good. She's working. She's absolutely on it. And when we were doing 9 to 5, she would come back. She would come on the set and she'd say, you've got to sign this. You've got to do this. You've got to come to this rally. You've got to... And it was tireless. I, I know I wrote a, a long... I, I did, delivered a long speech for a big honor she received way back in that day. And I had to research everything about her. And all her family, her brother, her kids, and I was just flabbergasted. We, uh, Jane, my partner, said she wrote a, a line about how her Rolodex or her file of facts or whatever it was that we had in those days, you thought it was for four other people. Couldn't be for one woman. It was just astounding what she was capable of. Of course, she's going to have to go into a home soon, but... <laughs> You can't make new friends when you're older. 
but, but that's, that's not, not true. true. You, you, but, but you do you have, have to be intentional about it. About it. It's, it's hard, hard to make new friends when you're, when you're older, older and busy. You have you to really want to, to and you have to put time and, and energy in it. But let me tell you something. something. Friendships, friendships between, between women, women are very different, different than friendships between men. men. And, and my, my heart, heart goes, goes out to men, men that they, they don't, don't have what we have. We should feel badly. Because when women, even when we haven't seen each other for a long time, when we meet up again, that we drill right down to soul level. It's way deep. It's none of this sex and cars and sports and all of that. And we, we're face to face, you know, we're not side by side. We really, we go there. And there was a Harvard study, Harvard Medical School, school study that shows that lack of female friends in your life is as bad for your health as smoking. Huh? Right. So. So, so make, make those female, female friends, friends, even though it takes a lot of work, work right? right? But, but it's, it's so worth, worth it. it. And, and in Grace, Grace and Frankie, Frankie you guys, guys kind of go, go through that situation, that situation where, where you become, become friends under the most unlikely circumstances, circumstances when your, your husband, husband suddenly, suddenly leaves you for, for each, each other. other. <laughs> uh, uh, that, that kind of trauma and, and life, life obstacle, obstacle to go through, you really can't do it without a girlfriend who's right there with you. And. Let's, Let's talk, talk about, about how, how, in Grace and Frankie, Frankie um, how, does how does that friendship, friendship develop, develop um, as, as you conquer, conquer the challenges that come your way? How did what? How did how, how, how does Grace and Frankie's yeah. friendship yeah. develop through the, the trials of the trials and tribulations? Well, it, it's, it's right, right there on the right script. script. <laughs> oh, here it is on page ten. Well, well, it was, it was a natural, natural for us. It was very easy, and, and uh, it was especially easy for me because I am totally uh, 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 admire and appreciate uh, Jane, Jane, and, and I, had I had to convince her of myself. myself. It was really a long, hard road. <laughs> but but I, and I even cut my hair back to occlude it, and she didn't even recognize it. <laughs> and, and we... Uh, Whatever, Whatever I don't know. I just feel like we have each other's backs, and that's all there is to it. We're we're about halfway through filming the fifth season. And, um, I can't believe you know, it. Like Friday we, we shot a scene where Frankie was kind of flipping out about stuff that I can't reveal, and and and, and I comfort her. And, and I can't I tell you what it feels, feels like, like to have, have four, four years. We have four, four years, years behind us, four and, four and a half years, years of playing these roles behind us. us. So, so that, that when, when Frankie, Frankie is hurting or, or manic, manic or whatever, whatever all, all of that, that friendship, friendship from over, over those four years, years all, all of those, those things, things that Grace, Grace knows, knows that Frankie, Frankie has done to her and to make her a better person just comes out. And it just feels so great. And you know, when I take her face in my hands, I'm, it's, it's Grace, Grace doing, doing it to, to Frankie. Frankie, it's Jane, Jane doing, doing it to Lily, Lily. But, but it's, it's also, also, I'm thinking, I'm so, so glad I can do this because we, we don't get, get to see women, women loving, loving on each other in our mass, mass culture, culture enough, you know? It's yeah. important yeah. Yeah. to show the importance of women <laughs> bonding and having each other's backs. And one and thing that, that we don't see a lot in pop culture, culture very much is the older, older woman, woman, younger man, man dynamic, dynamic, which you explored in a recent episode with uh, Peter, Peter Gallagher, Gallagher, your Grace's, Grace's new boyfriend. boyfriend. Um, uh, I, I was brought to tears by the honesty when, when you um, were, were showing, showing your insecurity, insecurity about the relationship. About the relationship. And did, you did you all see that? You know what I'm talking about? about? Jane rips, rips off her eyelashes, she rips off her hair extensions, and wipes off my makeup or your makeup, and I'm thinking it was terrifying. For you? For Grace or for Jane Fonda? Jane. Just, Just like, like sitting under these lights, lights. It's, it is <laughs> terrifying. But, but that, that went viral because, because I think people identify. People sure do. Right. People sure do. Yeah. Just, Just laying, laying it all out there. We're afraid, afraid to show our real selves. But you were still loved? That what? That you were still loved? He still me upstairs. I know, but he was paid to do that. Oh. Oh, right. I think he would have done that anyway, Jay, but... No, I asked him. No. I am too old. Oh. 
catch you all. <laughs> was been married how long? You've been married 48 years. Oh, to Jane? Can you believe it? 40 years. Well, now, Jane's a genius. Now, there's my, my face is a bit crumbly under those. Like, well, Jane looks beautiful. Yeah, she does. There's love and it's a partnership. You two also work together. Yes. That takes a lot of love. Could be difficult, be difficult. Um, uh, but you two work together, together and your and love, love gets stronger all the time. All the time. And, and I want to ask you too, and Grace and Frankie, you really targeted, targeted the issue as well of um, women and, and, and given empowerment, empowerment as they age. Um, just, just what do you what think, think changes, changes the most in terms of the way, the way women, women view, view themselves, themselves as, as they, they get, get older? older. Is there, is there more of a more comfort? Of comfort? Is, is there, there more, more confidence? confidence? Or, is or is there, there more insecurity? Or all of it, what do you think? I, 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 I think, think that, uh, well, you know, being, being, in, the, being, being in show, show business, business is a, a bit of an extra lump. Is it? <laughs> show business. Yeah. yeah. They don't call it show art, they call it show business. And so, uh, I think, it, I mean, for, uh, for an actor, things are certainly better because people, we're especially in a living example of that because yeah. women used to be discounted by when they reached 40, they were done. They couldn't be the love interest anymore and that was one of the few roles that, that would be available to a woman. Um, I, was, I was always destined for the, you know, the granny figure in, in a running suit. <laughs> And a, and a wig hat, hat. <laughs> which, which I was, I was never going to do. I mean, unless I was doing a care. I, I used to say about, they'd say to me, how can you just stand up if you'll lose your femininity? You're a No, no yeah. yeah. Oh, in the old day when I first started out. And I'd say, well, I don't like many men stand up. What do you mean? Why would I lose my femininity? I'd rather do the... Or I, they might make jokes about the mother-in-law. I'd rather do the mother-in-law <laughs> and show you who she is. <laughs> well, and all that, I mean, I, it was just nothing, a question even in my mind. In fact, you know, I, I just had to, I had to go out and do stuff on my own just to get a job. When I was 18, I was, I was supposed to, uh, I went up kind of against Sally for, what's the flying nun? Oh, the flying nun? Yes. And, and Renee, Renee Valenti, Valenti, who was head of casting at Screen Gems or one of those places, places she, she said to me, you know, you know Lily, someday there'll be parts, parts for gals, gals like you and me. <laughs> and she was, I mean, Renee, Renee Valenti, Valenti, you must know who she was. was. Well, she well, looked about like, like, she was kind of a, the stature of, of Nancy Walker. Walker. And, and uh, uh, she was just a comical, wonderful person. person. But, but she, she, I was 18 years old or 19 years old. and. With my food hair, hair Jill. No, no, I didn't. I had a little picture. But really, I think a lot has changed in that as executive producers, you are creating roles for women, yeah, not just on camera, but behind the scenes, right? Um, you're trying to hire women in directorial roles, writing roles, where you can. Yeah. And I think the women here um, look to that in their workplaces, too. Some so let me answer your question about what do I feel like I'm 80. Yeah. I don't get Have fuzzy, fuzzy rat's ass. ass. <laughs> Anymore, and I don't care. I never knew what the big fuss was anyway. I wouldn't want to go back to, for anything. I, I'm, I'm, I, I feel better than I used to, but you know, you have to have your health. If you, if you lose your health, and that's a whole other thing, but I am healthy. But um, I, I think that it's kind of great to, to be older. I don't know. I'm not scared of dying. That's you know, that you really got to keep your health or. It's, all, it's curtains in a short period of time. Right. Every day I come to the set, I look at you and I think, how much longer does she have? <laughs> I'm going to remember that.
Look at this. She's going to live forever because this is how she's going to Take that away. Thank you, Wanda. Yeah. Um, I, we could talk all night. Well, let's. Should we? Yeah. Unfortunately, we do have to strap this up, and, and I think, I know, right? Have us back next year when we're still at it, you know. Yay! I, I'd love for each of you to leave. We will be. Yeah, we will. Yes, we will. That's it. I'm going to be just fine, and things will start to fall apart. It's going to be okay. Any, Any final, final thoughts, thoughts, word of word advice, advice yes. for women yes. as they leave this room? Yes, yes. building their because relationships. This is about business here, right? Yeah, right. You, you're, you're all business. All business. I, I, I am not a businesswoman, but, but I, wanted I wanted to, to, to go, go into, into business, business as a way, way to earn money, money to pay for, for the statewide, statewide campaign, campaign called the California, California Campaign for Economic Democracy, Democracy that my then husband Tom Hayden and I started. And so uh, I, didn't I didn't know what business to go into. And I'm not, I don't know how many of you know about Delancey Street? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well. well John Maher was the founder of Delancey Street with his wife, Mimi Silbert. Maybe some of you know her. And so, and, and he was, anyway, cut it short, Fonda. I, I, asked, I asked John Maher for his advice about how do you know what business to go into. And he said, never go into a business you don't understand which I thought was really, really smart. And at the time, there was only one thing I understood, which was working out. And that's how I got into the workout business, to fund the political work. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's one bit. Don't go into business to understand. The other is, it's much more important to be interested than to be interesting. That's sort of a mantra for me. Stay interested. That's a great quote. We're going to add that to the many awesome Jane Fonda quotes that are available on the web. <laughs> How about you, Lily? What are, what are my words of wisdom? Yep. Yeah. Or Mrs. Well, I mean, they all are. Than. Oh, goodness. Uh, this, this I, my, my, what I've what always hearkened to is something Bob Altman, Altman told me, and it sounds, uh, it's, it's a bit... Uh, offbeat to say it here in this gathering of women, but whenever I'd say to Altman, uh, if I was working on a project and I'd say, oh God, I can't, this is happening or that's happening, he'd say, he'd say giggle and give in. Giggle and give in. Oh. You know, he meant fight the small battle. I'm fight the big battles, don't fight the small battles. And so uh, I, kind of, I kind of lean to that. But you don't. <laughs> No, I, no, guess I guess I don't. don't. No, I, I, like I like your thing about interested and interesting. interesting. Although, I've, I've already, already said, said it, though, so you can't say it. <laughs> well, you think they were all listening? Are you all business women? Yes. Wow, wow, that's, 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 that's heartening. heartening. Why don't you just, you just take, take over? over. My favorite ex-husband, Ted Turner, said, and he knows a thing or two about business, he said, men have had their chance and we've screwed it up, now women need to take over. Right.